We have previously covered the case of the mysteriously vanishing stars. These were all red stars with higher proper motion compared to other stars. Now astronomers have been left perplexed by the unexplained disappearance of a massive blue variable star. Let's see what we can find out about this star. Around 10 years ago, a sudden brightening event lit up an entire galaxy. When astronomers looked closer, they realized that this event was caused by a massive blue giant star. This star forms an important part of what they consider the evolution of stars. These massive stars evolve on very short timescales of a few million years, which is thought to be a much shorter timescale compared to normal stars. Blue compact dwarfs are ideal laboratories for studying these intense bursts of star formation, and their star-forming regions are thought to harbour tens of thousands of these massive stars. These galaxies are very metal poor, and hence so too are the stars. One of the interesting conclusions that they were able to draw from this initial study was that the solar wind of this massive metal poor star was around 800 kilometers per second. And this is significantly higher than its higher metal equivalent star around 100 kilometers per second. This star underwent a significant brightening event back in 2009, but the origin of this event is still debated with some thinking it is a luminous blue variable star and some thinking it is an expanding supershell or a stationary superwind driven by a young stellar wind, or possibly a strongly radiative stationary cooling wind driven by an old supernova remnant. Further observations were made in 2014, but when they came back to observe it in 2020, it had gone without a trace. The extreme solar wind and the extreme luminosity put this star at the most luminous and undergoing the strongest outbursts ever seen. The problem is that there is a lack of photometric variability in any of the photometric data dating back to 1949. Now most of these types of variable stars will show a variability of roughly one order of magnitude or larger over a 10 year time period. Those that therefore support this idea that it is a variable star think that it has exited its disruptive phase and is becoming obscured or simply collapsed into a black hole without producing a bright supernova. The alternative explanation for the variability is that this is part of the feature of a young supernova remnant. This would place it into the rare supernova type 2n class, and this is a core collapse supernova with a broad and narrow Barmer lines. These spectral lines are thought to be caused by ejected material interacting with the circumstellar medium. The lack of metal content they think may be due to an asymmetric explosion. The higher solar wind detected is not unusual for the expanding envelope of a supernova ejector. So why was no supernova event captured then? They speculate that maybe the actual supernova occurred sometime between 1995 and 1998, when, conveniently enough, there is no data available. Now if this is the case, then indeed some supernova explosions have shown bumps several years after the initial event and may therefore account for what we see as the variability. More recent spectra obtained shortly before it disappeared show spectral features that are consistent with the stellar properties of large blue variable stars in eruption. The scientists say that deep spatial resolution imaging is required to further discriminate between these different scenarios that they have proposed. So how would we explain this in the EU model? Now there are a number of different aspects that need to be mentioned. First, blue stars are stars that are under a much higher electrical stress compared to normal stars. One important aspect is that this star is metal poor. In the electric sun model, blue stars tend to be concentrated on the central axis of our galaxy's spiral arm discharges. The electrical demands are so great that they develop tightly packed, extremely hot tufts, giving them the characteristic blue and highly luminous nature. This is an area that needs more work to examine all the different types of stars that we see. Normally, we would expect to see these stars to be rich factories for the heavier elements, and hence not metal poor. It may be possible that this is an extreme example of this type of star, so much so that the photosphere has expanded to hold more tufts. 
this expansion may have resulted in less matter from the star's surface reaching the ionosphere by lightning in the lower atmosphere of the star. This could cause a spectrum to appear metal poor. The strong stellar wind indicates a strong electric field compared to the equivalent high metal luminous blue variable star. It may also be possible that the absence of spectral lines indicating metal content is caused by the smearing of those lines by the Stark or Zeeman effect. The stronger the electric field, the greater the smearing becomes. I have briefly talked about variable stars when we looked at the North Star. Don Scott's model here is that there is a binary star system where one star is discharging onto the other star when it is on its closest approach. This causes a sudden brightening event. The fact that we do not see this periodicity in the historical record is interesting, but could mean that this star fissioned, creating the companion much later on, which then caused the repeating discharge. But then why would it suddenly turn off? This may well be caused by a change in the star's environment. It may be that there is a change in the Birkeland current, or by entering a very dusty region which would soak up electrons and obscure the reduced light from the star. It may also be that the star's connection to its power source failed. Unlike the supernova we looked at recently, here the star is not pinched off catastrophically. In many respects this may hold many similarities with what might have happened to a proto-Saturn if it was our original Sun as it switched off from being a fully blown star. It is also important to realise that as this star sits in a galaxy that is over 75 million light years away, it is not possible to resolve individual stars. But as this star is so bright, they were able to detect its signature, but not the star itself. And it is this signature which has disappeared. Now this star sits within the compact blue galaxy. The blue colour may suggest a more mature galaxy or a galaxy which is exposed to a greater current density, but the question then is why is it so small? Now Art postulated that galaxies are born as quasars and evolve over their lifetime to become fully fledged galaxies. Could it be that something halted this process meaning more current is available than normal? This compact galaxy is not unique, there are many examples of these compact blue galaxies. So the question is how could they evolve into this state, small and energetic? There is much to ponder on here, not least trying to understand the evolution process for galaxies and looking at these anomalies and trying to explain how they might have formed in comparison to the standard process. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.